Hey folks, I'm Mike and welcome to another edition of our tech series here at Frankenstein. Today, we're going to be talking about guides. All right, guys, welcome back. As Mike said, we're going to talk about valve guides today. First question is, what does a valve guide do? And it's really simple. It guides. And what does it guide? It guides the valve. It makes sure that that valve goes right back to where it's supposed to on the valve seat. Now, what else does a valve guide do, Mike? Well, valve guide does a couple of other things, but mainly outside of the lateral motion and guiding one in the general direction that they should go, as all of us need in life. It <laughs> will also transfer heat from the stem of the valve into the casting, which then, if it has water in it, it will transfer that into the coolant, which is another big part of releasing that heat and keeping valve life up, which means cylinder head life up, which means engine life up. Absolutely. And different valve materials, as well as guide materials, will dictate how much clearance that that valve guide will have to the valve, which coincides with yeah. how much it's gonna cool, how much oil it's gonna Absolutely. use, and how long the valve is gonna Absolutely. Last. And also don't forget, a valve guide can also, with proper machining, be a little bit of a performance tool. Now that might be a little, little peel behind the cover as what we may <laughs> get into down the road, but keep that in the back of your brain. Outside of that, I mean, valve and seat guide concentricity, that machining relationship it's a really big deal. That's why we use our new end machines that uh, hopefully I'll get to see a clip of soon. You know, any kind of clearances as far as valve guide, what are, what are some of the different things? So we also have these different looking things up here and we'll get into that into just a moment. But let's go over for just a second. What type of clearances? Because it can't be a press fit between the guide and the valve, and the valve stem itself, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, right, right. So why don't you lead us a little bit down that road? What guides come in what heads, what are their purposes, and what are the benefits of running different materials and different cylinder heads? Mm -hmm. First things first, stock heads. They're generally gonna come with a powdered metal valve guide. What's powdered metal? Pretty much everything mashed into this. It's kind of like whatever's not used in other processes. They just mm -hmm. mash it all together with a little bit of glue and say, hey, this will probably last. Yeah. Um, it does last a long time, hence why they put it in OEM cylinder heads. I've seen a lot of heads that come in for our cylinder head porting services that could have 150, sometimes 200,000 miles on it. And we'll check the clearances and they're still good. Um, doesn't cool as, as well and it's not very soft. It's a hard material. So if you have a valve like titanium mm -hmm. uh, that runs in this, it will wear down the coating fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Next step is what a lot of people do is when we're, they would replace this valve guide, they'll go to this valve guide. This is what we call a bronze valve guide. Now there's a few different types of bronze out there. We're just gonna cover two of them that are the most common. This one here is a bronze phosphate. And some of the other ones that are in really high dollar cylinder heads will be a manganese bronze. Um, they essentially do the same thing, different properties for different reasons, obviously, but this will cool the valve a lot easier and you run a much tighter valve clearance because of this, which is a little bit of a performance gain. It's not anything that you can really measure horsepower with, but with a tighter valve guide clearance, you're gonna have a more secure valve seal because the valve's not gonna have as much room to be able to wiggle around. It's gonna come right back to where it goes. Now, there's another guy right here, and this one looks a little odd. Now, this isn't actually a valve guide. This is what we call a K-liner. It's a bronze sleeve, and what this is for is, initially what it was for, mm -hmm. was when these factory guides get worn out, instead of punching this guy out and putting a new one in, is we would ream the inside of this out a little larger, we press this in, and then we, hone, we trim it and then hone it to size. But when we started doing that, we actually started seeing some benefits of running a powder metal or a steel valve guide with a bronze liner. And I think Mike be, might be able to tell you a little bit more about that specifically. So the biggest thing is what you mentioned before about abrasion. With a powdered metal guide, it'll wear off the CRN of those LS7, LT4, LS9 valves. Correct. Of course, as everybody knows now, now that we live in 2021, but however, the one thing that it doesn't do is better than anything else is, is it just still doesn't release the heat. We took the abrasion away from it by having this nice little K-liner in here, 
but what we didn't do is we, we still have it in a steel, basically shield. And now that is gonna make it very strong. That's why everybody from top fuel down to X275 and LDR even love that valve guide combination. If you're gonna go NASCAR racing though, it's not exactly what you're running. Right. Because you're not gonna get the durability out of it. So if you want a super hot street car, because I mean, hey, five years ago, everybody had a thousand horsepower street car. Today, you better have a 2000 horsepower street car you wanna come to play. You can still get away with a lot of this right here using this wonderful stuff from CHE. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. We use it literally every day from fixing the LS7s, LS9s, LT4s to putting them that exact same proprietary blend of chemicals into our F-Series stuff. And then if you want to go, hey, I need to make 3000 plus. All right, cool. We can do that. You're going to need these though, Bubba. Because once again, you're going to need these to guide your valve's journey through that life of 3,000 horsepower. After this, I think we're going to get on to maybe some other little fun things about guides, huh? Yes, sir. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, guys, the last thing that we're going to talk about today is going to be the valve guide clearance. Different materials of valves and valve guides will require different valve guide clearances per the application, of course, as well. Uh, so a lot of different shops are going to have their own personal preferences on what clearances they would like on their cylinder heads. And we like our own as well, but we're not going to go into that as there's a million different ways to skin that cat. But we're just going to dip into this for just a second. Stock powder metal valve guides, they require a lot more valve guide clearance than bronze. It's a harder material. It is self-lubricating in a way, but it doesn't. it's not soft at all. So when the valve starts to want to wear on it a little bit it can gall the material and you can stick a valve guide so we like to keep those things a little bit more loose than what we would like on our bronze valve guide again on the bronze valve guide it's a much softer material so if the valve does scrub on the bronze a little bit it's not a big of a deal it's a little softer it can kind of absorb that it transfers the heat a lot better therefore we can run this valve guide a lot tighter for example on powdered metal we might run two to 25 ten thousandths of an inch Whereas on bronze, we can run these things on a stainless steel valve to 15 ten thousandths. And on using a titanium valve, we can run these things seven tenths, eight tenths of an inch. I mean, you can run them pretty darn tight. Same thing with the K-Liner. Again, when we are running something around like 3000 plus horsepower, a lot of times we want to have the durability of steel to where it can absorb that heat, but we want to have the lubricity of bronze. All right, guys, that's about it for today. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to our page and ring that bell so that you can see our videos right when we launch them. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, email, or check out any of our social media platforms right here.